Hello, this is Dr. K. In this video, we're going to talk about the activity life cycle. Activities are at the heart of an Android application. Each activity represents a screen in your application. As in many of these videos, I'm going to draw from a number of sources, including Headfirst Android Development, Android Programming, a Big Nerd Ranch Guide, and the Android Developer website. Before we jump into the activity lifecycle, I want to talk a little bit about activities and intents. To do that, I'm going to use a simple example application from Chapter 3 of Headfirst Android Development. This is a very simple messenger application with two screens. On the first screen, the one that appears when the application starts, you have an area for typing text and you have a send button. When you hit the send button, it sends the message to another screen, which displays the message. And that's it. That's the entire application. Remember that activities in Android represent screens. So there are two activities in this application, an activity that allows you to create and send a message and an activity that allows you to receive and display a message. What is not illustrated here is how the message gets from one screen or activity to another. That's done using an intent. And intent is used to carry information or instructions from one activity to another. So if you want to send information like text from one activity to another, you use an intent. But even if you just want to switch screens within an application, you also use an intent. And finally, the activity does not even have to be part of the same application. For example, if you want to request contact information from the contact application, or if you want the phone application to dial a number for you, you are also going to use an intent. When one activity wants to send an intent to another activity, it cannot do that directly. An intent always has to go through the Android system first. So if a sender activity wants to send a message to the receiver activity, it first sends it to the Android system. The Android system evaluates the intent, and if it determines that the intent is OK, it passes it on to the receiver activity. We'll look at the code for each of the activities in a minute, but let's go back to our view of the application screens. In order for our code to work, we have to know a little bit about the layout of each of these screens. The create message screen has two view elements. The first is an edit text view whose ID is message. The second is a button view whose ID is send. When this button is clicked, it calls a method named onSendMessage that is defined in the activity class for this screen. I'm assuming that you have already created your first Android application, so you should know where these view elements are defined. In other words, where are the IDs for these elements specified, and where is it specified that the onClick event for the button should call a particular method? I'll give you five seconds to pause the video if you need to and think about the answer to that question. What file defines and describes these view elements? Five seconds starting from now. Okay, the answer is that the layout resource for the activity specifies the view elements. And the layout resource is an XML file. If the activity is named create message activity, then the layout file will be named activity underscore create underscore message dot XML. Okay, 
finally, let's take a look at the other screen. And we'll just note that this screen has a text view view with an ID of message. Notice that this element has the same ID as an element on the other screen, but since they're on two different screens, we're never going to get into any kind of conflict between the two.